Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation, episode 90. Wow. I'm Jeff, and if you're new here, welcome. Nindy Nation is your one-stop shop for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. This week, we're checking out every new indie game releasing from November 8th through the 14th, and after that, we'll take a look at this week's best deals available on the eShop. New episodes usually post on Tuesday, and we're brought to you with help from our friends at the Nintendo Village. The schedule's a bit off this past week for reasons I won't go into right now, but you can follow me on Twitter at Nindy Nation if you want to know more. Check back in on Thursdays for our weekly Nindies at Night stream, and on Fridays for a quick wrap-up of the best Nindy deals available as you head into the weekend. Assuming we do our job here today, you'll walk away knowing exactly which game is next up to keep your Joy-Cons synced. And as always, we encourage you to chat with us in the YouTube comments or on Twitter. But now it's time to get into the games, and we've got a respectable list this week with 21 new releases. But as always, there are some games that slip between the cracks, and last week's list is longer than usual. We call these games our neglected Nindies, and as we kick off episode 90 of Nindy Nation, let's first take a look at the 16 games that released since episode 89. And first up is... <laughs> Adventure Llama. Oh boy, we're starting off with the good sh** this week. Oh jeez. It's a platformer, avoid the obstacles, clear the room, you're a llama, it's by Orube Studios, and it's two bucks. That's a two-buck llama right there. Nakin rhymes with bacon, and last week they dropped Hunting Simulator 2 to help you fulfill your dream of walking around in the woods, sitting in the woods, waiting in the woods, and then someday shooting an animal. That one's 40 bucks. Nakin rhymes with bacon, and last week they also dropped Tennis World Tour, and I guess I just missed the first entries in all of Nakin Bacon's games. There's two dudes on the cover. I assume they're tennis players and that they're important. Couldn't tell you who they are, though. The game itself does actually look pretty decent, but, I mean, it better, because it's 50 bucks. Row. I mean, no, not whoa. Row. Hmm. Row looks cool. It's an action platformer with a heroine donning a tail that can transform into multiple bugs and animals. Kind of like Shantae, but faster and with more combat. But it has this awful mobile game art style, and it's $25. What's up with... Wait, who made this game? Grinsoft, and it's published by Jesper Erlandson? Who's that? I mean, they've got a decent-looking game if it's 5 bucks, but 25 <laughs> I feel kind of insulted. Seashell Studio partners with Alternative Software to release Lunch A Palooza for $15.99. If your spidey sense is tingling, you're spot on because Lunch A Palooza is indeed a zany multiplayer party game with a gimmick. And the gimmick this time is that everyone is food. So it's like a food fight. Wowie! Ten Man Games releases an interesting visual novel with light choices and puzzle elements called Choices That Matter and the Sun Went Out. It's a story about the sun going down, of course, and the choices you make obviously matter. It's simple, but it's only $4.79, so that's okay. Chicken Police Paint It Red is a game that I've seen a lot of positive reviews for over the last couple days. It's about a detective force comprised of anthropomorphic farm animals, and it uses this really unsettling art style with realistic people who have farm animal heads. The story is told through a black and white art style that has splashes of color, very much like the movie Sin City or any other film noir. I gotta say, this mix of what looks like a high level of production and this overall premise is just so weird. I think Handy Games might have something here. And dropping it for 20 bucks makes this a reasonable consideration for you fans of L.A. Noir or other similar detective stories. Next up is the kind of game that I wouldn't recommend, and while I still don't, <laughs> I could see myself getting sucked into Battle Hunters for a week or so, and I might give it a shot. Battle Hunters is a top-down action RPG with squad-based mechanics in a generic fantasy world for 5 bucks. It was ported to Switch from iOS by Phase 2 Games and was moderately well-received when it launched on mobile for the same price last year. 
The reviews that I saw stated above all else that Battle Hunters does scratch that mobile game RPG itch, but ultimately it doesn't do too much different and the loot system seems to be a bit underwhelming. I think I'm still gonna play it. Not sure how to pronounce this next Nindy. Uh, One Eros? On Eros? One Eros is a first person narrative puzzle adventure in a surreal world for $10.99. Developed by Coal Valley Games and published by Ultimate Games, it mixes some escape room puzzles into the mix, but it seems to be overpriced. Rataleka's new narrative adventure does sound interesting, but I have trouble suggesting it until I see more about how Ord plays out. It's a text-based adventure where the story is told three words at a time. So an example is the screen says alarm and your choices are wake or snooze. Visually, it looks like you're staring at a Cards Against Humanity deck and it's only four bucks, but let's check out some reviews before you pick this one up because I'm gonna need someone to tell me the story is worth the effort and the price before I recommend Ord any further. And wrapping up this week's Neglected Nindies is the segment we reserve for the unexpected Nindy that releases where under no circumstances would we recommend it. Here are this week's five Nindy no-nos. Crazy BMX World is a mobile game ported to the Switch by Shin Yudin where you just move left to right, but you can do it as a bulldozer or as a bicycle with a hot dog hat. How is that BMX? It's three bucks. Then there's this game with awful presentation that looks like Mahjong, but it's called Shizen Sho Nikaku Dori. That one's two dollars and not the best first impression for the team at Red Flagship. Baltoro thinks the Switch is a smartphone and they won't be convinced otherwise. They also think you're an idiot, which is why they've released Salad Bar Tycoon for two ninety nine. dollars Remember kids, at Baltoro Games, we say f- you and your money. Survival is the next thing to fall out of Sabex couch cushions, and it's like a sh- version of Don't Starve where they removed all of the graphics. Well, not all of them. There's still some stuff on the screen, it's just not anything that you'd want to look at. And the dumpster fire rounding out this segment of shovelware is brought to us by Digital Game Group and their new release called Slot of the Seasons. If you like clicking a button and watching icons roll by, and you have only two options, one is to buy this game for $7.99, and the other is to tear down a house by grinding the bricks down one at a time with your teeth. I mean, I guess, well, what kind of bricks are we talking about here? In terms of games that could be good, the Chicken Cop game does look decent, and Row might be solid, just not for 25 bucks. Otherwise, I want to see how Ord pans out, but I'll probably just watch a video for that one too. What about you? Let me know if you'll be picking up any of this week's neglected Nindies in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Not the most exciting week for neglected Nindies, but we've got a couple of games coming up this week that I'm really excited for, plus one game in particular that I think will be a big hit with most of you Nindy Nation citizens listening or watching right now. With another mid-sized week and games of quality up and down the board, here are your 21 new releases from November 8th through the 14th. There always seems to be one game every week that launches on a Monday. It's usually something not very good, and my guess is that the publisher is thinking maybe they can squeak in some sales before the rest of the games drop that week. (laughs) Gotta say, I'm not sure there was too much thought, though, behind the new release on Monday the 9th by Wix Games, because they kick off the week of new releases with Duck Life Adventure. Oh my god, you guys. (laughs) This game. I think it's a side-scrolling, just kinda everything kind of game? It is truly impressive how they take so many 2D gameplay styles and just make them all look terrible. They do have a pink duck with a magic wand though, so that's probably worth $7.99 all on its own. Tuesday, November 10th, however, has four games release, and two of them should definitely be on your radar, with one of them being our pick of the week. That said, let's start off this group with what might be the worst all-around game we've ever covered. I know, that's saying a lot. But I just can't think of any better title for Orange One and Triangle Studios' very own Slide Stars. You play, well, You watch one of 20, quote, world-famous influencers, end quote, go down a water slide. That's it. That's the game. 
and there's not even gameplay to see. It's just pictures of fake celebrities going down water slides. It features world-renowned people like Mike. Mike is one of their featured stars to play as. That's it. And if that doesn't sound bad enough, you can watch shitty artwork Mike go down a water slide for the low, low price of $29.99. Congratulations, Triangle Studios. I can't ever recall seeing a game, if you can call it that, that made me throw up in my mouth a little. If you're a fan of rhythm games, you no doubt know the name Harmonix, who grew to popularity with Guitar Hero, dominated the world with Rock Band, were bought by MTV Games, which was then bought by EA before selling exclusivity for Dance Central on the Xbox One, and then after the Kinect failed, they just kinda disappeared off the face of the earth, kickstarted an Amplitude remake, which has yours truly's name in the credits, and have been working on various multiplayer music games ever since. It's been a long road for Harmonix, full of ups and downs as they try to find new ways to merge gaming and music. Well, they're back this week with Fuser, a multiplayer DJ game that looks to take elements of their card game drop mix and turn it into a console game. There's over a hundred songs, but you're going to want to be a fan of pop or dance music to enjoy the selection. If you are, and playing a live DJ-style game sounds like fun, I think Harmonix has proven their worth, and Fuser even at $60, is probably a great time. Speed 3 Grand Prix is an F1 or Formula-style racing game published by Orange One and developed by Lion Castle. For $35.99, you're getting a fully-featured racing game with a nice presentation. There's not too much by way of competition in this niche of the racing genre, so if you've been waiting for a solid Formula One racer, Speed 3 Grand Prix is probably a fit. And the team at Edelweiss partnered with Marvelous to bring what I think is Nindy Nation's pick of the week with Sakura of Rice and Ruin for $39.99. There's one big caveat, though, at least for me. While this gorgeous watercolor painting of a 2D hack and slash gives me all the good vibes of games like Odin Sphere and Muramasa from Vanillaware, it's the other half of the game that I'm nervous about because it's a rice farming simulation. As the young goddess of spoiled harvest is banished from her own world, she must band together with a group of humans to battle demons and regain her abilities in rice harvesting to prove herself as the daughter of a warrior god and god of harvest. Sakura has high enough quality and presentation that I'd be really surprised if the farming simulation wasn't well handled. That portion of the game makes me nervous that it just might not be for me, but... I'll tell you what, that combat and those visuals are so appealing, I think I'm going to have to give it a try regardless, so stay tuned for more impressions. Ah, this is one of those times where I'd usually never take a chance on a $40 game, but this week, I'm going to do it just for you, citizens. I'll take that one for the team. On Wednesday, November 11th, we get one new Nindy before the big Thursday drop, and it's Area 86 by SimDev for $7.99. It's yet another entry in the growing catalog of puzzle games built around the whole escape room formula, and it looks pretty fun. You're a robot making its way through a spaceship, and in addition to the escape room style gameplay, there's also a heavy influence on physics puzzles, so there's bound to be some funny moments in there as well. Area 86 is one of the more promising titles this week. The big Thursday drop this week is actually not the biggest day for new releases, as the bulk of this week's titles are split evenly between Thursday and Friday. The six new releases on Thursday the 12th begin with Brain Z, a janky and rudimentary first-person shooter about mowing down waves of zombies and not much else. It's another polygon art title, and they've been working really hard to split hairs between mediocre and good in terms of quality with their overall output. It's really just wandering around a destroyed city and taking out waves of zombies. It could be fun for a few minutes, but the low production quality and limited gameplay makes Brain Z a game to consider maybe for a couple bucks, but I'd steer clear at its launch price of $6.99. Well, would you look at that? Horny anime girls with cat ears, which I've recently learned is called Kimono Mimi? Who knew? In Forest Guardian, Top Hat Studios has built about three hours of hormone-fueled girl-on-fox-girl narrative, and, uh, eh, $10.99 doesn't seem too bad for that. Linelight drops on the 12th and is one of the best titles in the chill puzzle game category I've seen. The world is almost an open-ended structure where you're a dot on a line, and you have to solve a variety of puzzles to get your line to the... uh... 
wherever it has to go. The visuals are extremely simple and very pleasant, as is the music, and the team at My Dog Zorro has won a few awards for Limelight as well. It's published by Plugin Digital, and at 10 bucks is one of the easier recommendations in this category. The next game makes me feel old, so tell me if you're just as lost as I am when you hear about a new game based on a YouTuber called Life of Boris Super Slav. It's a $5 adventure that looks like a webcomic where you'll... You know what? I don't know any of these names. I'll just read this. Jump into the hilarious world of YouTube personality Boris the Slav King in the official game of Life of Boris. In Super Slav, you will learn about the life of Slav phenomenon Boris and his adventures. Meet his unique family such as Cousin Anatoly and Babushka, or his neighbor Vadim, and find out what it means to be cheeky breaky. Funbox Media and developer Nix Digital think you're a silly dum-dum because they want to charge you $9 to play their Christmas-themed sliding block mobile port called Santa's Xmas Adventure. Don't do that, okay? Next up is another one of those games that looks awful, but I can see that there's a little fun game in there, too. Just not sure how much you have to dig to find the good inside of Zombies Cool. Which, no, I didn't say zombie school, but rather zombies, as in zombie is cool. It's a top-down twin-stick shooter with some of the most generic characters and levels I've ever seen, but there appears to be a decent upgrading system and a bunch of gameplay modes. It's four bucks, it's definitely not gonna be good, but here, let's allow the team at Game Museum to provide their own thoughts. The largest zombie mop-up operation this world has ever seen is about to start. Mind you heads, zombies. Zombies Cool is a growth-type shooting action game in which you have to mop up zombies that frequently pop up in town while searching for the root of the zombie virus. And this last part is not my own commentary, but verbatim from the description. Wait a second. Did you just say you don't think you can handle playing because of all the different enemies? This isn't the first time I'm telling you this, but when you feel like that, you should discuss things with some coins. Coins can solve any problem you'll run into in this game. The hell does that mean? And that's it for the Thursday drop this week, but we've still got Friday, friends, and this week there are nine games dropping on... <gasps> Friday the 13th. Red Limb Studio gets things moving with Beat Me, a physics-based multiplayer game with fantasy characters and over 100 levels to play through. The levels do look fun, but I'm not sure there's anything else here that'll really blow you away, though, especially for $12.99. Nobody responded to me last week when I asked if anyone was playing Artifacts Mundi games. Maybe I should go get some of their codes and see if I can convince one of you to tell me if their super pretty point-and-click adventures are any good. This week, the team releases Grim Legends 3, The Dark City. And while I'm not sure how this one stacks up to the first two entries in the Grim Legends saga, we've pretty much got your standard fair fantasy-themed adventure here from Artifacts Mundi, and it'll cost you $14.99. Zombie Blast Crew. Jeez, what's with all of the zombie games this week? Feel like those games would have performed better if they didn't release immediately after Halloween, but whatever. It's a Cubic Games release, which tells me the production may be on the lower end, but they usually publish games with a really fun gameplay loop. That seems to be the case with Zombie Blast Crew and its twin-stick combat. You've got multiple missions per level, characters that represent their own classes to give you some variety, and plenty of options for upgrading your loadouts. I like what I'm seeing from Zombie Blast Crew, but as it is a Cubic Game release, I'm willing to bet sometime in the next month that $10 price will drop to $0.99 cents or lower. Bus Driver Simulator is the best game this week that is released by Ultimate Games, focuses on driving a bus in Soviet-controlled territories, looks like it was developed for Windows 95, and costs $30. See? With the right perspective, anyone can be the best at something. We talked about Suguru last week. It's one of those cheap puzzle games released by Hook Games, and this week they released Suguru Nature, which is the same game, but they added the wallpaper images from the game Firewatch. Except, I don't think they got permission for that. Good news is, it's another two bucks that you can keep right there in your digital wallet. 
Friends who are still itching for the spooky, pay attention because No Gravity Games and Mr. Siatsku release a big old bag of nope, nope, nope for me this week with Apparition, and it is the epitome of a game that sounds super cool, but I know I'll never play. It's a first-person game that includes survival, horror, and puzzle solving, but with a decent focus on the survival because you're just a dude alone in a haunted forest playing with an Ouija board because you're just asking for trouble. Of course you summon otherworldly beings, try to take pictures of them, or just GTFO before they get you, and this unique blend of spooky elements releases for just $7.99. So if you want to take a chance, it won't cost you too much. Ultimate Games has really cranked up their output recently, putting out as many as five games a week, and I'm starting to think that they're just spreading the same amount of effort across more and more games. I don't know. Take this for example. This week they release Superstar Panda, which is a $10 pixelated arcade game of some sort, and here is the entire description. A classic arcade game from young and old for old and young. Evil rockets, evil meteors, evil satellites, evil spacecrafts, evil UFOs, evil, not really, power-ups, non-evil, ultra-great and helpful shield, supersonic space-time breakdown slow-mo. the hell did I just read? Was that a game description? Next! Rataleka's release this week is a visual novel with some light detective elements and Vera Blanc Full Moon. Take the role of a woman who can read the mind of others as she tracks down serial killers in this visual novel that looks like a comic book for $4.99. And Unhatched wraps up the week of new releases, and I'm not sure what to think about this game. It's a quirky, cartoony, card-based puzzle game by Philip Loster and is published by Sonka, both of which I'm not familiar with. Unhatched launches for only 5 bucks, and for that price, I do like what I'm seeing, but I think we'll want to check out some other impressions before adding it to our own libraries. I feel like I spent more time ragging on games than usual this week. It definitely felt like a subpar list in terms of quality, but there is no denying how excited I am for Sakura, and there's definitely fun to be had with other games like Limelight and Fuser, and of course there's a zombie game for just about every genre possible this week too. So what are you picking up? Let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. As far as the deals go this week, it is similarly light, but there's a few games worth checking out, and for whatever reason, the Nindy Trifecta gods are smiling down upon us. So as we wrap up episode 90, let's check out the week's nine best deals available through at least November 14th. I'm singing the song, I'm singing the song, now it's time for deals. Odalis and Onakin are very complimentary games, and both of them are designed by the creator of Blazing Chrome. Their traditional homages to Castlevania and Ninja Gaiden, both are around 3 hours long and both have a good amount of additional content, and they're both 75% off with Odalis being your Castlevania-like for $2.99, and Onikin being your Ninja Gaiden-like for $2.75. Is it Gaiden or Gaiden? Have we ever figured that out? Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden? I think when I was a kid, I said Ninja Gaiden, but I think now that I'm older, I say Ninja Gaiden. Now that I'm talking about it, I can't remember. If turn-based strategy RPGs are your shtick, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go straight to the eShop and pick up Steam Tactics for $6.99. This is a friendly steampunk world about anthropomorphic animals who also happen to be sky pirates, and it plays just like a classic Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics game. I bet that statement just made a lot of ears perk up, didn't it? Well, what are you waiting for? It's a pretty new game and it's already 30% off. Go check out Steam Tactics. I'm sorry, what's that? You want grid-based strategy, but steampunk animals for seven bucks isn't doing it for you? How about checking out Farabel, which is 80% off for $1.99? It's a turn and grid-based strategy RPG where you start at the end of the game, and every time you level up, you actually have to select an ability to get rid of. I know that doesn't sound fun, but the game's challenge and balance is built completely around it, so it never gets frustrating, and it's a really cool, different approach to the genre. It's only two bucks, and I think anybody who is even remotely interested in this genre should give it a shot. <laughs> and I mean this endearingly, but if all you're looking for is a polished, dumb little platformer, then Toki is a great way to spend an hour. It's $2.95, which is 80% off, and it's a remake of an old Sega Genesis game. 
It looks and plays great now, and even though it's only an hour or so, it's still a fun little playthrough. And this next segment was when I realized how many Nindy trifectas were on the list for the week, so I thought we'd just carve out a little segment just for the deals for those. Sparklight is one of my favorite games that I almost didn't play. It's very similar to titles like Moonlighter or Swords of Ditto in that it is a top-down action adventure with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. With a story right out of the Zelda playbook and gameplay that is just the right level of challenging, Sparklight comes highly recommended while it's half off for $12.49. Going Under has been the game that I just can't stop playing even alongside Hades. It's a very similar concept to Hades, but instead of playing as the Lord of the Underworld's son, you play as a marketing intern who just discovered there's an endless series of dungeons below your tech startup. And let me tell you, this game is hilarious. I have so many screenshots and videos of moments that made me crack up that I actually had to delete a few. Going Under is an absolute treat. It's only 20% off this week, but unless you're still knee-deep in Hades, I definitely recommend going under as your next Nindy Trifecta, because this dungeon crawler for $15.99 also comes complete with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. But if you want that type of experience with something a little more challenging, or if you're a big fan of Souls-like games, then Immortal Planet is the game for you. Also with a top-down perspective, this game brings a cool sci-fi aesthetic and slow, methodical combat that heavily leans into your ability to dodge, parry, and counter at just the right time. At only $5.09, Immortal Planet is a pretty easy recommendation as long as you're ready for the challenge as you progress through procedurally generated levels with roguelike mechanics and RPG elements. But we're not done yet in this attempt to find a Nindy trifecta for everyone, oh no. If you don't like the friendly top-down, the sci-fi isometric, or the colorful twin-stick formula, how about a side-scrolling cyberpunk version? That's what Black Future 88 brings with it, and while this title is a little bit janky, it was one of my favorite games of 2019 and is currently 60% off for just $7.99. Like the titles before it, Black Future also brings to the table procedurally generated worlds with roguelike mechanics and RPG elements. That's a lot of RPG elements. Even though the new releases have been slow these last couple of weeks, the deals have remained solid. Are you picking anything up? If so, let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. With all of that out of the way, citizens, we're all done for the week. Don't forget to keep an eye out on Twitter or the YouTube notifications for when we go live Thursday night and come back on Friday for a quick dose of awesome Nindy deals in the Friday afternoon special. For everything else Nintendo-related, go check out our friends at the Nintendo Village, where they're dropping daily news, reviews, features, and shows to cure that Nintendo itch. You can find everything they do in one place at thenintendovillage.com, and we thank them for their support. Thanks for hanging out and listening today. I'm sorry things were delayed this week, but we'll plan to get back on track and be back on our normal schedule next week. I hope to see a bunch of you on Thursday for Nindies at Night, and until then, I'm Jeff, this has been Nindy Nation Episode 90, wow. And remember, no matter what kind of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.